Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include European Union ups Philippines typhoon aid to 13 million euros. George Osborne, EU is killing UK economy. European Union poll, the public has split on British membership. Foreign patients cost the NHS £2 billion a year. Plus, European Union lawmakers vote for stricter data privacy rules. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The European Commission announced Tuesday it was upping to 13 million euros reconstruction aid for the Philippines, as the UN appealed for 300 million dollars to help victims of super typhoon Haiyan. European Union Development Commissioner Andris Pybolgs announced an additional 10 million euros in aid as the death toll mounted, with Haiyan having destroyed entire coastal communities and possibly claiming 10,000 lives, according to the United Nations. Well, it's going out on a limp to be a pundit on EU aid programmes, especially when there is such a clear need for humanitarian assistance. But one has to ask, where is all this money coming from? Sure, the kleptocrats all think that Mario just knocks it out on his Heidelberg. But it's us, the people of Europe, that have to pay for it. There is a fundamental flaw in the plans of our Bruswellian buffoons. We're all skint. Strike one against the idea of an expanding global economy. British Chancellor George Osborne, who's been credited for getting his country's debt under control and keeping pace with an austere budget, said one looming threat to the steady-as-she-goes economic policy that England has been practising in recent months is the European Union. I want us to stay part of the European Union, but it has to be a reformed relationship, the leading economy official said in a sit-down interview with Reuters on Tuesday morning. OK, let's start with the facts. Old Georgie Porgy hasn't got a clue. He's either as naive as his chump buddy Chairman Cameron, or else they're blagging it and trying to pull a fast one. Osborne's been credited with getting the UK debt under control. Lies. Absolute lies. And I think it's deliberate too. What in actual fact Osborne has achieved is a temporary reduction in the deficit. That means instead of putting £500,000 onto the UK credit card each month, he's putting, say, 325000 Well, anyone can see that that's not going to bring UK debt under control at all. We in Britain have had to pay a very high price for that deficit reduction. And why are we here? Because good old George and Dave's bankster mates had a Vegas-style blowout and now they want to use our cash to pay for it. British people are equally divided on whether or not the United Kingdom should remain part of the European Union, according to a poll published on Tuesday. The YouGov survey showed that 39% of those asked would vote to stay in the EU and 39% would vote to leave. Of the three main parties, Conservative supporters are the most Eurosceptic, with 47% opting for withdrawal compared to 32% who would choose to stay. Labour voters would prefer to remain inside the EU by 55% to 26% and an overwhelming majority of Lib Dems, 71% to 21%, would like Britain to remain in the Union. Hmm. Well, let's assume for a moment that this poll is accurate. That's a big assumption. But I'd wager there wasn't even a poll at all. They probably just plucked some numbers out of the air whilst gossiping around the water cooler. However, assuming they're right, then it looks like a split for an EU referendum. That being the case, then it's clearly going to take more pain for the folks of Britain to realise that the EU is a burden that is sinking the good ship United Kingdom. Well, on the topic of polls, well, how about we conduct one ourselves? I have set one up on the homepage of our website. In an, an EU referendum, would you vote to remain in or leave the European Union? So please jump across and place your vote. The poll is on the right-hand column, about halfway down the page, and I will cover the results in the nightly news next week. (music) 
Research for the Department of Health predicts that the health service would be more than £500 million a year better off if it charged foreign nationals to use GPs and other services, including recovering about £388 million in costs and £200 million from the health surcharge. So-called health tourists, foreigners who come to the UK with the intention of using the NHS, are costing the taxpayer between £70 million and £300 million a year, the study said. Now, the NHS is vital and a defining part of our social infrastructure. Of course, UK cannot afford to pay for it, and that is one of the reasons that we continue to borrow money. Or is it? Did you realise that the UK civil service employs over 500,000 staff? Did you also know that at the height of the British Empire, when we ran over one-third of the globe, the civil service had 4,000 staff? Red tape, bureaucracy, regulation creates jobs. So if you want to get rid of that burden and find a way for Britain to be able to afford social welfare services like our amazing NHS without borrowing, then you, yes, you, are going to have to get up, stand up and speak out. You can start by writing to your MP and asking them if they are aware of the difference between UK deficit and UK debt. Ask him or her to explain how a reduced deficit reduces ongoing debt. Write into us with your letters and, of course, their replies. Lawmakers in the European Union's Parliament Civil Liberties Committee voted to strengthen Europe's data protection laws on Monday, including plans to impose fines of up to 100 million euros on companies such as Yahoo, Facebook or Google if they break the rules. The vote in Parliament's Civil Liberties Committee opens the way for further negotiations with EU countries and the European Commission on the plans. The first revision of Europe's data laws since 1995. In the nearly two decades since then, vast changes have taken place in how data is generated, stored, shared and viewed, leaving lawmakers determined to get ahead of the game and draft rules that they say will better protect individuals. Really? The kleptocrats expect us to believe that they have our best interests at heart. Well, try telling that to a Greek, Spaniard, Italian or French farmer. In fact, try telling that to your average German citizen. Here is the nugget in this story. Vivian Redding said, The European Parliament has just given its full backing to a strong and uniform European data protection law. Complete cobblers! The Civil Liberties Committee might have given it the nod, probably after having it stuffed down its throat by the EU Commission, but the EU Parliament hasn't been asked yet, because the laws are still in draft. Oh, but I forgot, the 751 ME sheeple will vote as prescribed anyway, or else they don't get their voting pay. Ah, perhaps Miss Redding is right after all. Today in our video library, the European Union is a threat to democracy. Well, you've heard me repeating this time and time again in the nightly news. Not because I have any political agenda. We don't. The unit is non-partisan and apolitical. But don't just take my word for it. In this video, Kostas Chrysanthopoulos presents the case to the Oxford Union Debating Society. Kostas opens the case for the proposition by proudly stating that he is a Europhile. However, for him, there is no question that the EU threatens democracy, as he cites the lack of governmental transparency created by the organisation's infamous bureaucracy. He furthers his case by claiming that France and Germany combined influence makes it impossible to overturn a decision in their mutual interest. And he concludes by saying that although this threat is real, it is necessary, as the only alternative is to destroy the individuality of member states by centralising power further. Now, is that final statement rather interesting? Doesn't it remind you of Jean Monnet's statement to the United Nations in 1954, that the people of Europe should be led towards a single, united, federal state? I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.